Compilation time. One of the big frustrations when working with big C++ projects. And, as you might have noticed if you've been playing around with the techniques introduced in the previous episodes, metaprogramming and the heavy use of templates that comes with it tends to blow up compilation times even more. Luckily, there is a solution for this. Welcome to episode 10 of this Bits of Q series on template metaprogramming in C++. The episode where we are finally going to look into high-performance metaprogramming. In the previous episodes, we looked at how the results of runtime and compile time come together when writing tuple algorithms. In the next episodes, we are going to leave the world of runtime behind again, and we'll go back to the core of template metaprogramming, type manipulation. And, since this is something that takes place purely in the realm of compile time, that means that high-performance metaprogramming is all about improving the compile time performance of our meta functions. We will be developing some high-performance alternatives to our current meta functions, and later also our tuple algorithms. Let's first talk about how to compare two different implementations to measure whether one is faster than the other. The current implementation will go into a main slow.cpp file, as we expect compilation to be slow. And the new high-performance alternative will go into a main fast.cpp file. If we then compile these two files a couple of times and take the average, we should get a pretty stable result, which might look something like this. And this is where one of the big problems lies when trying to measure compile time performance. Looking at this chart, it is easy to conclude that the faster implementation is only slightly faster, and that it is probably not worth the additional complexity. However, these measurements are very misleading, as there are a lot of things happening when compiling such a source file that have nothing to do with the filter algorithm. The compiler needs to initialize itself, the file needs to be read from disk, it will be parsed and an abstract syntax tree will be built from it. These are just a few examples of things that happen even before the compiler starts processing the logic of the filter algorithm. In other words, it is hard to measure only the thing we are interested in, only the algorithm itself. There is a lot of overhead which is skewing our measurements. So, how can we get rid of this overhead and make our measurements more reliable, allowing us to make informed decisions on any improvements we are considering? First, we can try to improve the ratio between overhead and actual algorithm compilation time. A simple way to do this is to use more or more complex calls in our benchmarks. Secondly, we can try to quantify the amount of overhead and subtract it from our results. A lower bound for measuring this overhead would be the compilation time of an empty main.cpp file. This would still need to be read from disk, the compiler would still need to initialize, etc. So if we subtract this baseline measurement from the compilation time of our actual algorithm implementations, we should get pretty close to measuring only the algorithm compilation, and as such, we will be able to make a much more accurate comparison. Okay, we now have a pretty good idea of how to measure the performance of our meta functions. We could at this point pick any of the algorithms we developed in this series, try to implement it in three different ways, benchmark each implementation, and then simply pick the fastest one. This might lead us to finding some faster algorithms if we are lucky. But this is not really an efficient way of doing this. So, before we get to writing code, I'm going to ask you to be patient just a little longer, as we are going to take a more in-depth look at the different operations a compiler does while processing our meta functions, ordered by the time it takes to do them. Before we get into the details, I should give credit where credit is due, as I did not come up with this list myself. This and many of the techniques we'll be discussing in the high-performance meta program episodes were invented by Odin Holmes and Giel Dowers. I'll leave some information in the description pointing to the awesome work they did in advancing the field of template metaprogramming. The fastest operation that the compiler needs to do when processing our code is looking up memwise types. When you instantiate a type for the first time, say list of int, the compiler will put all the information it needs to work with that type in a big hash table. This process is called memwization. The next time it encounters this type, it will just look it up in this hash table. This lookup operation is lightning fast and can basically be ignored when reasoning about the performance of metaprograms. The next fastest operation is passing an extra parameter to an alias call. If we have a myList alias and we compare the time it takes to call it with one parameter and the time it takes to call it with two parameters, that difference is the cost of adding an additional parameter to the alias call. It's the first operation that is not completely negligible. To be able to compare the cost of different operations, we will say that the cost of adding one extra parameter to an alias call is one unit of compilation time. Types are a bit more complicated than aliases. Hence the cost of adding an extra parameter when instantiating a type is a bit higher. About twice as slow, 
perhaps a bit more. Then there's the base cost of culling an alias. There's some extra logic happening here, making it again about twice as slow as adding a parameter to a type. We are now talking about 5 units of compilation time. Of course, the total cost of calling an alias is both this base cost plus an additional 1 unit of time per parameter that is passed. Still, assuming you don't go crazy with the number of parameters, so far all the operations we have talked about are in the same order of magnitude as simply adding a parameter to an alias call. These are all very fast operations. This starts to change as we move to type instantiations. Types can be very complex. They could have an arbitrary number of member variables or functions, and all this information needs to be stored in this hash table. Since there's no way of knowing beforehand how much data is needed for this, the compiler needs to do some allocation when it first encounters a new type. And if you've ever looked at optimizing runtime algorithms, you probably know that allocation is slow. We are easily talking an order of magnitude slower than calling alias. Say 50 to 100 units of compilation time. Plus, of course, the variable cost for the number of parameters involved in the instantiation. In other words, we can easily do 10 different alias calls for every type instantiation, because there's no dynamic allocation needed when working with aliases. Instantiating a function template has the same problem as instantiating a type. Allocation. Next to that, there are a few other things that need to be done for function templates, like some administration needed for argument-dependent lookups. Lastly, there's Svine. Substitution failure is not an error. This is super slow. The compiler must go through the entire overload stack, instantiate everything in it, and even if it finds a matching overload, it needs to check everything to make sure there's no ambiguity. And that can take a lot of time. So, if at all possible, try not to use Svine in your meta programs. To summarize, if we want to write fast meta programs, we should try to avoid everything below this line as much as possible. Of course, Metaprogramming is all about type manipulation, so we can't get rid of type instantiations completely. But there is a lot we can do by looking for opportunities to replace types with aliases, especially for intermediate results of our often recursive computations. To make this idea a bit more concrete, let's have a look at the simplest meta function of our metaprogramming library, the if function. Quick recap. We use the if function to choose between either the then or the else type based on the Boolean condition. We use two specializations, one for true and one for false, to make this happen. In our current implementation, we also use the has type convenience template, which simply defines a type member alias for the given type. To simplify the slide a bit, I will rewrite our if slightly. I will make the true case where we return the then type, the default behavior, instead of a separate specialization. That saves us a bit of space on the slide. And to simplify counting the number of type instantiations, will replace the has type template with a normal alias. Now let's look at a few calls to if to see how many type instantiations are involved. The first time we call if with true a and b, we clearly have a new type instantiation. Nothing we can do about that. The second line looks quite similar, but now we have a condition that evaluates to false. And hence we are dealing with a new type. So again, an expensive operation. The third if function is functionally equivalent to the first. If true, then a else b is exactly the same as if false, then b else a. Yet the compiler doesn't know this, it just sees a new set of parameters, so this again is a new type. Lastly, we have the same call we saw on line 1. So here we have a fast lookup in the hash table. Bottom line, if all your parameters are part of a template type, then any change to your parameters are going to result in a new type instantiation, which is going to be expensive. So let's look at a different way of defining our if statement which does not put all its parameters in the template type. Here we again use the main template for the true case and a specialization for the false case. But this time we only put the condition in our list of template parameters. Where before if we define a type alias as a member, we are now defining a template alias, which we'll call f for function. In order to get the actual type that results from the if condition, you now also need to call that alias, call that function. So our syntax for using if has slightly changed. Where before we would pass all parameters to the if template, we now pass only the condition and pass the rest to the f member. You could say that we've separated logic from data. The template keyword needs to be added in order to call f as it is now a dependent name. We discussed dependent names in episode 2. I'll leave a link to that section of the episode in the description if you want to revisit it. So we just made our if a bit more annoying to use. What's the advantage? What do we get in return? 
Let's again look at the same four if statements from before. The first two if statements are the first uses of if true and if false. So both are new types and hence processing them will be slow. Of course, we now also have to call the f template alias. But from a performance standpoint, this is quite negligible. So we'll just ignore it for now. Then on the third line, things get a bit more interesting. Before we were dealing with a new type here, as it was the first time we had the parameters false, b and a. But now b and a are no longer part of the type template. So this will simply be a lookup of the if false type. The last if statement is again the same as the first. And as such, it will be super fast to compile. So by removing the then and the else type from the template struct, we can now process a hundred different if statements at the cost of only two type instantiations. One for if true and one for if false. Once those have been memoized, all we need are lookups and alias calls. So let's put this theory to practice and actually benchmark this new if implementation. See if such a small change can really make a difference in practice. We are back here in Visual Studio Code, which have two implementations of our if meta function. On the left, you have the original implementation in main slow.cvp, and on the right, the implementation that, according to our theory, should be faster. Both files contain 10 structs, a through i, which are passed to the if statements. We have 100 different invocations of the if meta function with a true condition, and 100 different invocations with a false condition. Of course, we have the same invocations in our main fast.cvp on the right. For our baseline, we have a main.cvp here with the same 10 structs. But now I defined 200 variables with a fixed type. In other words, the compiler still needs to do everything that's needed to define 200 variables, just like in main fast and main slow, but it does not need to process any meta functions to determine the types of these variables. As such, the compilation time of main.cvp should be representative of the overhead which we expect next to the compilation of our meta functions. I have two compilers installed on this machine, Clang 13 and GC11, and I've created two small scripts here to invoke these compilers a given number of times. Next to that, I have the time builds pull script which will invoke these shell scripts and timed executions of the compilers for the three files. So let me start a thousand compilations of these files so we can get some performance results. While this is running, let me explain how we do the timing. For this, we use the output of the time command. The time command gives three different bits of information about the command that is executed with it. First, you have the total time or real time. This is the time between the start of the command and the time it finishes, also called the wall clock time. We do not use this total time for our measurement, as it is heavily influenced by the load on the system. Instead, we use the total of the user time and system time. The user time is the amount of time the program spends doing computations, and the system time is the time the system, the kernel, spends executing computations for the program. As such, adding up user and system time gives a more stable measurement of the time the compiler is actually working on our code. Let's check in on our measurements. The compiler is heavily churning away, compiling our sources over and over again, and the first statistics are already being reported. Compiling our main.cp a thousand times takes about 35 seconds with GCC. So this is our baseline. If we also compile our main slow.cvp a thousand times and subtract these 35 seconds, this gives us 3.8 seconds for the actual invocations of the if statements. For our fast implementation, however, the if statements only take 2.26 seconds, making it 1.68 times faster. Let me fast forward to get the results of the Clang compilations. For this specific bit of code, Clang is quite a bit slower than GCC taking more than one half minute for a thousand compilations. We do see that also with Clang, the fast implementation is indeed faster in practice by a similar ratio, 1.74 times as fast. Although I don't have MSVC available on this machine, I can tell you from experience that also on Microsoft's compiler, these techniques give a serious performance increase. Of course, making a small update to our if meta function it's just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to what is possible to increase the performance of our meta programming. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to do so now so you don't miss out on the next episodes. In the next episode, we will introduce a whole new style of meta programming that will make it easier to replace type instantiations with alias calls. In following episodes, we will also talk about techniques that reduce the number of type instantiations without replacing them with alias calls, as well as some limitations of template aliases which prevent us from making everything alias-based. Thanks for watching. See you next time.